Hi, I'm Jeff Schneider. I'm one of the original founders of Sweet Retail, and I'm here to present Sweet Pies, a point of sale solution built natively for NetSuite and Salesforce. A little bit of background on our company Sweet Retail is a software startup since 2014. Our mission is to deliver the number one POS for the world's leading cloud platforms in NetSuite and Salesforce. Our point of sale solution is aimed at mid market and enterprise retailers who need moderate to high volume checkout in store, as well as full support for the many channels they do business in. What do we add to the NetSuite and Salesforce platforms? We add a modern, fast, and powerful POS. It's an Apple iOS app experience with super fast online and offline performance, EMV chip, Apple Pay, Android Pay, Samsung Pay. We offer a variety of add-on modules for features such as omni-channel gift card support, inventory visibility, support for serialized and lot numbered items, and many other capabilities. The solution can be rapidly deployed and easily scaled across new terminals or even new locations in a matter of minutes. It's a highly configurable solution and we support a wide range of beautiful and elegant hardware. SweetPods can be configured for most general merchandise, specialty, and quick service retailers. From seasonal stores, gift and candy, and coffee and juice shops, to home furnishings, beauty supplies, sporting goods, and apparel, wine shops, and even B2B retail, the retailers you see here benefit from Sweet Pies built on a single cloud system to run their entire businesses. I've launched Sweet Pies on my iPad here. I also have a physical cash drawer that you'll hear kick during cash transactions, as well as a thermal receipt printer and a barcode scanner for rapid selection of items during checkout. I'm going to sign in using my clerk credentials. You'll see how we manage these credentials in the second half of the demo, as well as all other settings and data that drive the POS. We'll start with a very simple transaction. Note that we have an anonymous customer selected by default. There's hundreds of settings that drive sweet pause. This can be changed to a blank customer if you want to encourage named uh, customer capture. Um, as well as several other options. You also see my items to the left. These can be set up in any hierarchy you want using standard NetSuite or Salesforce product management. You can also search for items by UPC, by display name, by item name, by brand, as well as other fields that may pertain to these items. We'll start by scanning an item several times. Should see our auto promo, in this case, buy four snacks, get one free. This is part of our advanced promotions engine. We'll scan a different item here as well. And now we'll check out. In this case, I could assign a sales rep, but we'll just do a simple submit. I'm going to put in a cash amount, in this case, $100 received, calculates the change owed. We'll hit submit. The drawer pops in the background. We'll print a receipt. And the customer is on their way. I can scan now to start a new transaction or simply hit sale complete. I'm going to select my drinks cold category. I'm going to select my iced mocha category. I'm going to select the small iced mocha. We have the option of some prep notes, but hold whipped cream. We'll add this. We'll submit. Also showing off another advanced promotion feature. In this case, I can offer 5% off all mocha drinks to our loyal customers. Perhaps they haven't shopped with us before, or perhaps they have. So press cancel. We're going to do a customer search. I happen to have a loyalty card here that I'll scan. Pulls up the customer. We can also search by phone number, mobile number, email, first name, last name. We can edit the information. This form is configurable if you want certain fields required or hidden. It's easy to configure this in NetSuite or Salesforce. I'll cancel out of this. We also see that a sales rep has been pre-assigned to Michael Evans, which can bleed into commissioning and reporting on the backend solution. We'll submit this. In this case, we'll do it by card. I'm going to insert my chip card into the reader. I'm going to sign for the transaction. You can also optionally Set this to not require signature for under $25, which is a popular option. The card's been approved. I'll remove it. An email receipt to our loyal customer. 
Let's take a look at what's going to be emailed. We see a nice receipt showing them the discount for the iced mocha, who they were served by, even the customer name. Again, this is all configurable if there are certain fields you want to include or not include. There's also a barcode that can easily bring this back up for visibility into history or to do a simple return. We'll send this off and we're ready to conduct another sale. Let's now go over to our search, find that transaction we just did. We could process a void, which will completely reverse the sale anytime in the first 24 hours. I'm also showing off an override pop-up where I'd have to call over a manager or someone at a higher level than me in order to approve this void. You can implement these authorizations for quite a few functions in our POS for in-place override of what an entry-level clerk may or may not be able to do. We'll do a return in this case. I have the option for restocking fees. I'm going to select the iced mocha that I originally bought. We'll add it. We'll put in a note. I also want to point out that you can pair this with a Bluetooth keyboard if you tend to do a lot of typing in your retail environment. We'll submit this. And I have the ability to refund this back to a gift card that can be used for a new sale or be given to a friend of mine, great for retail branding. But in this case, I'm going to put it back to the card that was originally used. No need to have the card in hand. We'll simply submit it. The card's been refunded. I can print a receipt, etc. I'll hit return complete. Be ready for the next sale. I also want to show off some more item features. We support native unit of measure to the third decimal place for weighed goods, uh, in this case, ounces for a food product. I'll show off real-time inventory, featuring all the standard inventory visibility fields that NetSuite offers. You can configure which locations can be seen by which tills or which clerks, part of our advanced inventory module. Let's go over some of the various other types of items we support at the POS. We have strong support for matrix items, in this case, summer shorts available in a variety of colors and sizes. We have support for unit of measure goods, in this case, a carving station of a certain cut of beef at $8.99 an ounce. We can go to up to the third decimal place in the case, the case of weighed goods. We have support for kitted and assembly items, service items, virtually any item type supported by Salesforce or NetSuite. I'm also going to show you another feature. We're going to drill in on this ABC's Life book, and we can stream in larger images for intimate details of the products that your clerks may need to sell. Another feature I'd like to show you is our NetSuite feature, which can be permissioned on a clerk or manager basis. And this gets us directly into NetSuite where we can process uh, items that have been bought online and are ready for in-store pickup at this location. We can also get into reporting. You can build a custom retail dashboard that serves your clerks or managers best. Finally, I'm going to show you our open-close shift functionality. I started this demo today with the drawer already open. At the end of the shift or the end of the day, I'd be expected to count this down, submit, and then it gets reported into NetSuite or Salesforce where you can audit the over-under see which clerks opened, which clerks closed, and the expected activity throughout the shift. Now let's take a look at what drives the POS. For this demo, I'll be using NetSuite. Please notice under the shortcuts, the main components we use to manage your in-store environment. We use standard item records to control item availability at the point of sale. This is basically a safe search. You can apply your own filters in order to control what shows up or what doesn't show up. Let's take a look at one of these items. In this case, it's a standard inventory item. In addition to the sales descriptions, pricing information, and all other attributes that flows through the POS, you'll notice our Sweet Pause tab which allows features above and beyond what NetSuite considers part of an item record. 
We take the same approach with customers using a safe search that you can filter out if certain customers, let's say your wholesale customers, aren't going to be available at the POS. You can filter them out from the search. And again, if we take a look at any of these customers, there are POS attributes under the Sweet Pause tab. All our transactions are hosted here. We use standard invoices. Let's take a look at one of them that we did earlier through the POS. See, it's an invoice. It's been paid in full. The items are preserved properly. We cross-reference promotions right at the line item level. And if we look at the Sweet Pause tab, you have all sorts of data that segregates this from a standard transaction. You have your POS transaction time, your POS payments. You have a merchant receipt stored neatly here in NetSuite itself as well as various other attributes they can use for safe searches or reports. Our users are all managed at the POS. So whether you're a full user of NetSuite or just a clerk, your information and accessibility will be managed here. If we take a look, this is a standard employee record. You simply have a Sweet Pause tab that layers permissions on top of NetSuite in order to control access to the POS. All our terminals are virtualized inside of NetSuite. Very easy to add terminals, swap terminals out, or move terminals between stores. The heart of the POS is our settings object. And if we take a look at one group of settings, which is applied to one or more terminals, you'll see the modules are controlled here for point of sale, general settings, transaction settings, sales tax settings, including support for Avatax, payment method availability, receipt configuration on a per location or group of terminals basis, customer fields accessibility, payment gateway accessibility, as well as the ability to specify backup payment gateways and then easily toggle between them, inventory availability, and a variety of other features. Our shifts are all hosted inside a NetSuite. You can slice and dice this data, for instance, you could create a safe search that shows all drawers that are short by more than $5, proactively set up a trigger to alert the managers immediately on occurrence. So they can then log into NetSuite, take a look, and either perform more training for the clerk that closed the drawer short, or perhaps monitor the activity to see if they're skimming the drawer. All our promotions are hosted in NetSuite. We have quite a robust promotion engine. Whole orders as well as item promos can be applied at the category, subcategory, or item level. I also want to point out, because SweetPause is built natively for the cloud platforms we support, features such as NetSuite's Make Deposits for End-of-Day Reconciliation, or the hundreds of reports they offer and customizations to those reports you may make can span across the point-of-sale channel into other channels, you can aggregate or segregate point of sale data. So rather than reinvent the wheel, we fully leverage the back end and processes that already exist. And that concludes our demo today. Please stay tuned as we release additional videos covering the many modules and features that can be added to SweetPause. Thank you for watching.